you you know I was going to talk about this story, but there was a disturbing report from Jason Trier about what has been going on at Sony that basically sent shockwaves through the industry. Everybody's talking about it. I'm going to talk about it, too, because there's just too much in the story to digest. And this might be a longer video. Let's just get right into it. Okay, so unless you've been under a rock, I'm sure you've heard what's going on. But basically, uh, I'm going to give you the TLDR version. Then we're going to talk about a lot of the stuff that has happened in the last day and what everybody's been saying about the situation. So basically, PlayStation didn't let a Days Gone sequel happen. They instead wanted the team to support Naughty Dog on other projects. And largely, the direction seems to be that they're only going to do the AAA projects and all parts of Sony will be working on that. And I'm paraphrasing here, obviously. And uh, it seems like smaller games just aren't the priority right now. So let's go over the Schreier report first, talk about some of the Jim Ryan stuff that's come out today. And this is going to be a very conversational episode. Um, so this is from the Schreier article. Um, a man named Michael Mumbauer. He leads the visual arts branch or team within Sony. Uh, he was trying to remake The Last of Us Remastered. He actually originally pitched remaking the original Uncharted, which, in my opinion, is a game that actually needs a remake. The Last of Us was... Okay, so The Last of Us came out, right? It was remastered on the PlayStation 4 to sort of celebrate the PS4 Pro and largely made to be an excellent game. It's already an excellent game on the PS3. It was remade on the PS4. It was given enhancements months ago on the PlayStation 5. And apparently there's a remake that's going to be, or a, either a remake or a remaster that's going to be made quite soon. I don't know if I copy and paste this, but I wrote remaster again, and I keep messing up those two terms. Um, so they worked on it for a few years, and basically what happened is uh, they were made to support The Last of Us 2 because Last of Us 2 slipped into 2020, and then Naughty Dog came in to help them with the remaster, but then Naughty Dog just took it over and took it over for them. Uh, somewhere within all this, Herman Hulst, he's a former head of Guerrilla Games, he talked with them and he's like, why is this so expensive? Well, it's expensive because they're developing for the PlayStation 5 as opposed to you know just upgrading textures on the PlayStation 4 or whatever. And they explained that to me is like he they said he didn't seem to care. Like they said, it's too expensive. And largely after all this happened, uh, a bunch of people were mad. They were pissed. They had this project that they were leading and it was their first project that they were leading. They were excited about it and they quit. So the takeaway is Sony is all in on triple A's. That means more Spider-Man's, more God of Wars, more Last of Us. And that is good sort of it's good sort of it makes business sense but it seems like the messaging internally sounds like everyone needs to fall in line and if they don't they're leaving um and they're leaving right down the street to xbox they're going to xbox game studios and if you look at the talent that are landing over there a lot of them are former sony employees and uh you know i watched david jaffe this morning a little bit and he said, people at Sony, and I'm quoting, I wrote it down, Jaffe, so he likes to call people out when they misquote him. This is exactly what you said. They are not pleased. They are not happy. There is a lot of shit going down internally at Sony, he was talking about. And he also sort of alluded to, he alluded to several things on his show that really sort of got me thinking about what has been going on over there. So... He brought up the Sony Japan studio closure. Uh, that's like Sony's core. That is, it's Japan. They're a Japanese company. Um, and people are leaving in mass quantities, according to the Schreier article. I believe he said mass quantities, but lots of people left that studio after it was restructured, whatever that actually means. Um, uh, Bend... Now, we're finally getting to the Days Gone 2 pitch. So Ben basically said, hey, we really want to make Days Gone 2. And if you look at the conversation around Days Gone 2, it was quite contentious when 
the game came out. I think it scored like in the sixes and sevens. Um, some people thought it was really, really bad, but now that time has gone by, there's been a next gen enhancement patch for it. People are starting to sort of come around on Days Gone 2 and the word of mouth that I've seen around Days Gone has been largely positive. So I hope Sony is listening to how mad people are today about this call to not allow Days Gone 2 and just the general consensus about the product because yeah, okay, it didn't have a good launch. They improved it. And now the consensus is, well, not consensus, but a lot of people are talking about how much they enjoyed Days Gone and would have loved the sequel. But if you're if you're not doing double A's anymore, I guess that means we're never going to get another Days Gone, which is insane. It's only triple A's now at Sony. Is, is, the, is that true? That's what is very curious to me. So Bend said, hey, let's make Days Gone 2. Sony said, nope, you're going to make a new Uncharted. So there's a new Uncharted in the works, by the way. So they were worried while working on this game about getting folded into Naughty Dog. And they said, hey, look, if you're just going to make us Naughty Dog, this isn't going to work for us. <laughs> and I'm paraphrasing again. I'm just imagining, I'm imagining that's how it went. This is a conversational thing where I just sort of talk. So please don't quote me um, verbatim about my jokes. Um, so anyway, they said, hey, look, we do not want to get folded into Naughty Dog. That's not what we're about. We want to make our own game, an all new game. And Sony said, okay. So hopefully this AAA game from Bend is going to get the support it needs. And all that's from the Schreier piece. Now I could end the video here, but I wanted to talk about some of the other things Jaffe pointed out. So one of the, well, he also pointed out that the Series S just launched in India and it's the biggest launch in history. So that's, that's insane. But then let's talk about Jim Ryan. Jim Ryan, so many people are talking about him and I might even make a separate video about this. Is he actively impacting Sony negatively. You look at the PS4 era, they're on fire. We hit the PS5 era and it starts strong and already it's like, where's your Game Pass competition? Why are your games $70? What's going on? So here's a few things from uh, Jim Ryan. This is from Games Radar. In a new interview with The Telegraph, Ryan defended the next generation game price hike. This is about going to $70. Yes, I do consider it fair, he said. If you measure the hours of entertainment provided by a video game such as Demon Souls compared to any other form of entertainment, I think that's a very straightforward comparison to draw. Okay, Jim, like Jim, read the room. Game Pass is $1. That's your competition. And you're and you're talking about increasing the price. Xbox is saying we want more people to be able to play games, not just people who have $70 to throw at two games a year. And they've tremendously succeeded. So in November 2020, Jim Ryan also said about the Game Pass competition, there is actually news to come, but just not today. We have PlayStation Now, which is our subscription service, and that is available in a number of markets. Um, great. Then in February, they closed the Japan studio. Sorry, restructured. They restructured the Japan studio. Now, I got in a lot of heat today because I was really, really riled up about this report. And here's what I tweeted. And I corrected my mistakes in my tweets because Twitter does not have an edit button. Anyway. Am I mistaken, or is Sony remaking slash remastering Last of Us for the second time? Hot take, but maybe the remastered version that was already made is enough and Days Gone deserves a sequel. And if you look at the, the community reaction, which I'll show in a second, I think a lot of people agree with that sentiment. And then my immediate reaction after reading the story was, so wait, Sony isn't betting on small developers anymore? Isn't that literally how Naughty Dog started out? And by backing them, they fostered one of the biggest AAA developers in existence? The more I think on the Bloomberg story, the more I'm mind boggled. I don't, I don't understand how we wind up here. You got people who are upset internally. They're just leaving the company. They're bailing because of these decisions. And I, I do realize Sony doesn't have the same capital as Xbox, right? 
a few people have pointed that out to me in the comments. It's just like, yeah, you know, Microsoft has billions, if not what trillions. I don't, I don't even know how much money Microsoft has. It's all the money basically. And Sony has to be a bit more careful with their bets. So I get the $70 thing. Like I understand where he's coming from. Yes, the value is there, but it's, it's not reading the room. So I just want to read a few tweets from just people who reacted to this story, just like I did. And all I did is I typed in PlayStation and these were the most popular things. So Miraculous says, you can love PlayStation console and still criticize Sony for their poor decisions. Same applies to Xbox and Nintendo. They all have their own set of problems that I don't approve of. And he is right there is a famous picture of me for when I was criticizing Xbox for running Thief at 900p and it was running 1080 on the PS4. And it's pointed criticism, respectfully as you can be, obviously, that fosters change, right? I was very hard on Xbox during the early Xbox One era. And I feel like they needed to hear that. And they've been constantly, I would say, goaded largely by the community. And now they've finally got it together and they are swinging. They're going down fighting. If they're going down at all, I don't think they are. I think they're going to win this console generation. And by like, I think they're going to at least be on par with Sony or just outright be so future looking that they, they take it. And it's, look, I... I'm careful not to make statements like that. I do not want to stoke fanboy wars, but I am calling Sony out. They are dropping the ball right now in terms of mindshare, in terms of consumer consensus, and even the people who love Sony the most are starting to say, what's going on? This is not a good look. PlayStation leadership goats, no Jim Ryan. That's from Hunter. MBG says, I got to say as a PlayStation fan, it's disappointing to see all the negativity surrounding it right now. I just hope Sony kicks it in gear and starts communicating with the fan base in a way that leaves us feeling good. I couldn't agree more. Where is your news? Your news is the Schreier report about how you're canceling everything or you're just making everybody a support studio? It's, it's really disturbing. It's really disturbing to see. And apparently Twitter just automatically refreshes. Let's go over to Comic Book Gaming. Maybe they got some good ones. Great reporting from Schreier. Even if the actual story is a bit disheartening as a PlayStation fan, I get Sony's emphasis on big blockbuster games. Oh my goodness, this website. I get Sony's emphasis on big blockbuster games, but so much of PlayStation's history is equally defined by the weird, smaller experimental titles, too. Both are important. Colin Moriarty, former coworker. My biggest takeaway from today's Bloomberg report is just the utter disrespect Sony internally showed Bend after Days Gone. Absolutely insane to think that you should put that team back in serfdom after they release a great AAA title. Also, no one wants a remake of The Last of Us. I am truly nervous that we're dealing with a PlayStation that thinks they need to remake The Last of Us. What the hell is going on over there? Colin's really echoing how I feel about the situation. You know, think of, they just did this thing where they largely canceled the PS3, the PSP, the PS Vita store, and... And then they're like, hey, we remade Last of Us at $70. Come get it. Ugh. It's so upsetting. Sean Layden's liking a whole bunch of tweets about people saying, hey, Sean Layden did a pretty good job with the PS4. What are you doing, <laughs> Sony? Oh, and my tweet's on there. Great. Yep, so it's just like a collection of the stuff that got picked up. Look, I would love to hear what you think. This this story like just really, really riled me up. We need to hear from Sony what their plan is. Is their is their vision truly just remakes? Like, are we gonna get more like just Shadow of the Colossus again? I swear to God, if a, if a Last of Us remake comes out, like <laughs> that game does not need to be remade. 
It was just done fantastically for the PlayStation 4 with enhancements that worked on the PlayStation 4 Pro. It just got a next gen patch. Maybe that is the remake remaster that they're talking about. That's fine. But a whole, no, no. You don't put a studio like Bend who made, okay, look, I understand the critical reception of Days Gone, but they took a shot on a new IP and sometimes you hit and sometimes you bunt. We'll call that one a bunt, right? It wasn't a home run, but they got the second base. They made you some money. Let them take another shot at it. And thankfully they are getting another shot, but do not abandon the idea makers at your company, or you're going to keep seeing people walk on over next door to Xbox period. I'm getting upset. I'm getting upset talking about the story. Anyway, this video is way longer than it's supposed to be. Yeah, I'm like double time right now. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these types of videos where I just sort of sit in front of the camera and talk, you can uh, subscribe. Thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed so far. If you really, really like these videos, you can also become a member. Memberships are a thing YouTube offers, so I turn them on. Uh, you can click the join button. I believe it is on the front page and it is on this video. It says join. So that is optional if you like this type of content. I really would like to know also what you think about this story. Is there an angle that I'm missing? Or are you as upset as I am? <laughs> uh, all right. Got a cool one for you tomorrow. We're going to talk to Paul Tassi about why he decided to make the switch to Xbox as his main console. And uh, yeah, that's it for this one. I'm Destin signing off. Hang in there, everybody. Bye.